our last episode, we made the four-day passage from North Carolina to the Bahamas in gale weather conditions. We've arrived into the island chain of Eleuthera, a beautiful spot located 50 miles east of Nassau. Relatively long, at about 110 miles, Eleuthera's eastern edge faces the Atlantic Ocean, while its western coast lies along the Great Bahama Bank. We're securely anchored in the harbor of a small town called Spanish Wells, along with only a few other sailboats. After recovering from our intense passage, we refueled and then explored town, stretching our legs and picking up some fresh provisions to bring back to Calico skies. Since arriving, weather conditions have been a mix with some bright sunny days, but also many overcast ones that are often accompanied by high winds. The Bahamas generally experiences higher winds and more unsettled weather patterns early in the year, which is exactly where we are now. So what is it blowing right now? 25, but I've seen been seeing up to 35. So this is kind of similar to, to the weather actually, we were in coming down. It's actually less than what we were in coming down. It's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> it's a couple days after um, we arrived in the Bahamas, and we've just been recovering from our passage, and basically the same kind of weather system that we sailed down here in is now coming through the Bahamas again. Um, it's passing through again, and I thought I would film it because one thing I don't know that people necessarily realize, I know I didn't, I would have no reason to know this um, before I started cruising, is that the Bahamas gets weather systems the same way that the states does, like the, the east coast of the states. They just roll in. Um, it's literally the same weather patterns. It's just further south, so it's warmer. The Caribbean, it's always east. So yeah. it's easy to find an anchorage for the prevailing easterly trade winds. But uh, Bahamas, it's like it started off west, and then it was going northwest, then it's going north, and then it's going northeast. So our anchorage last night, where we had this nice little strip of land protecting us, is now becoming a little more. One thing when you're a cruiser in the Bahamas you have to consider is anchoring and anchorage protection because depending on where you are in the Bahamas there's not necessarily a lot of protected anchorages and there actually is a lot of bad weather um, there's a lot of beautiful weather but the weather changes frequently just very much the same as like the, the east coast of the states Today, while moving anchor spots to accommodate yet another change in wind direction, we found a little squid on the deck. Now look at this. See how his eye, see how the color, I don't know if the camera doesn't pick it up, but the little speckles around his eye are coming, fading in and fading out. No, please. Whoa, touch I touch it and it turns like the darker color. Look at that change in, yeah. That's freaking amazing. I don't know if you can see it or not. Zoom in a little bit. Yep, there you go. It's like magic. Crazy cells, huh? And he's dead. And he's doing it. They must auto adapt. You know, it must not be controlled by his brain. It's controlled by some sensors. In 2001, it was discovered that these squids were able to propel themselves out of the water at about 6.6 .6 feet and fly approximately 33 feet before re-entry. And that's Discovery what he did. Discovery which led to identification of flying squid. So I guess he jumped out of the water and landed on our bow last night. Poor guy. But maybe he was escaping a predator and he would have died That's anyway. why they were doing it, yeah. So we are starting to fillet the squid that landed on deck. From earlier research today, we've determined this poor little guy is a Caribbean reef squid. His sacrifice will not be completely in vain, though. Cast iron. Grace has eggs and breadcrumbs ready. So finished product here, not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited about this. I have my lemon, is that a tough one or a good one? Good. Yeah? Fresh calamar. <laughs> calamar, like Italian stuff. Fresh calamar. So, uh, as a result of that passage down from the States, down the Bahamas, where we saw 40 knots of wind, and uh, you know, near gale conditions for three or four days. We found a bit of a tear in our mainsail. It's right here above uh, reef two. So I'm gonna go ahead and patch this up today. I think I'm gonna use sail repair tape and then uh, stitch over the taping. Um, I do have cloth. I don't know if it's you know big enough to require cloth. 
Um, so I'm gonna try to tape first and stitch that and see how it works. Um, rounding the edges so the patch can't pull away as easily. And then I'm gonna take this on deck and measure it. So I'm gonna clean the area of some denatured alcohol. We keep all our denatured alcohol in these jerry cans. Uh, we use it for cooking as well, so we have quite a stash. As a general rule of sailing, one can always count on wind when wind is unneeded, and vice versa. This is particularly true when on passage or when working on a project on deck. We, as cruisers, are of course used to this, so with a little teamwork and some patience, we eventually get the patch securely into place. It's easier to take down below them, won't they? Yeah, but you know, you don't really... I mean, I think if it was not so windy... Amid the building wind, Bill decides the additional strength of stitches is not necessary, and we call this project complete. Later that day, our friends come to join us in our anchorage. They are passing through Eleuthera and have made time for a quick visit. You might remember Big Bear from our cruise in Canada this past summer. He's the friend that's come, and we're excited to see him and his girlfriend Emily again. The cruising life is funny because friends come and go routinely, but no matter what happens, we always reunite at some point. Whether sooner or later, when it comes to cruising friends, crossing paths again is one of the few almost certainties of this life. The next day, Brian and Emily depart, and so do we. Though they are headed north, while we're headed south, towards the Exumas. Go for a little sail! Woohoo! Today we're basically moving to a staging, staging location to jump across to the Exumas. Um, it's better sailing today, but they said you need to cross it in settled weather. Uh, there's like 12 miles of rocks that are like 7 feet deep, so they said you need to be settled weather and be able to visually navigate. So we're just moving about 10 or 12 miles south so that we have an easier day tomorrow and we could uh, motor across a no wind tomorrow uh, and start the Exuma chain, which is really exciting. We haven't done that. You know, most people who have been cruisers for three years have done the Exumas. Somehow we've managed to skip Georgetown, which is like the mecca of cruising. The Exumas, for people who don't know, there's two pieces of the Bahamas. There's the Abacos, they're east of Florida, and they're in the northern part of the Bahamas. Um, and then the more southern part, I think it's like south of Eleuthera. Yeah, this would be kind of where the Exumas start. And they're known, the Exumas are known for crazy clear water. Um, and they're warmer because they're further south. Um, and generally they have a little less protection than the Abaco area, so you kind of have to move around a lot. So, uh, we're pretty excited because, in my opinion, everywhere I've been in the Bahamas has been super clear water, and this is supposed to be next level, so that's what we are to expect in the Exumas. So there is current cut. Current cut is this cut, as it's called, uh, that lets you out to the other side of Eleuthera, to the sound side. Um, it's very tidal, it runs the four knots, so you're supposed to meet it at an hour and a half to two hours after high tide in Nassau, <clears throat> which is right about now, so timing is pretty good. Woo it's like a washing machine in here. So that was kind of fun. That was a little like washing machine in there. Now it's calm again. Um, we're going to drive back south now, once we get around these rocks. Yeah. 
Have a look. We've got a pork loin and some broccoli garlic um, on the barbecue right now. It's a very calm acreage. And we'll just be here for this evening and then we'll be on the move again tomorrow towards... Zoomers. Yeah. We'll make these zoomers tomorrow. Yeah. I also have a pot of rice on the stove right now with a little bit of carrot in it. Making some whole grain rice. We're trying to eat a little healthier. Um, the last few months with all the boat work and craziness and lack of a cruising life we just you know we're in the states got a lot of fast food and stuff and um i mean it's bathing suit weather so <laughs> you know i got rid of the winter bod there is no one here we're just the only boat Join us next time when we enter the Exuma Island chain and discover the clearest turquoise water. And also, show you the install of some new equipment that has Bill's back saying, 